Hello and welcome to I'll Knit If I Want To. I'm Andrea Mowry of Drea Renee Knits and this is a little weekly podcast where I try my best to answer some of your questions. Today I am wearing my stripes pullover and my open sky shawl. The shawl is an oldie but a goodie. This was woo, part of the naturally straightforward collaboration I did with my good pal Annie Rowden of By Annie Claire that we did for a couple of years back quite a few years ago now. So it just felt like the cozy sweater to pull on or shawl to pull on with my sweater. And that's all I have to say about that. As always, I will link to the patterns below. But let's go ahead and jump into some questions. So for today, question number one is, I just finished morning rituals. This was the very first pattern I had seen in 2020 when I took up knitting again. At that time, there was no way I was ready for such a pattern, but I have finally challenged myself to give it a try. The coziness of this sweater is what I knew I needed in my wardrobe and I can't wait to knit up another. Unfortunately, when I whip stitched to the collar, it was a little snug and now my head won't fit. <laughs> I need help. I was able to undo the sewing of the collar. I don't know what I did wrong. Should I give it another try and skip a few stitches so it isn't so tight? Should I loosely sew the collar? Could I not sew the collar and just fold it? Your help is much needed. Please help me save my morning ritual sweater. Okay, so you definitely have a few options. If you don't mind how it looks not tacked down, you can absolutely just leave it as a folded collar. For me, when I know I'm going to wear a collar folded, I don't like when it shifts around. You know, like how when it like it unfolds a little and you have like that gap of like the line of where the rest of the sweater starts and like where the fold should meet and it doesn't. That just, it's like something I'll fiddle with while I'm wearing it. So that's why I like to whip stitch it down, but you don't have to. And if it's comfortable for you, especially since it's folded in instead of out, um, if it's comfortable for you, don't even worry about it. Uh, to make you feel better, so I have knit two morning rituals and I did the same thing on one of mine. It's really easy to just sew it down a little too tight. The thing, oops, the thing is, is when we are whip stitching that collar down, there's no flexibility in that sewing line that you're putting in there. So it's great if you wanna add stability, but yeah, we want it to be big enough to get our head through. So one thing that I like to do, and I do this with tubular bind offs, I do this with Kitchener stitch, I do this with eye cords, I do this with anything that I wanna make sure is not getting too tight. I will actually do a little stretch test. So I do this every, like inch or so and I just tug and make sure that things aren't getting too taut that they still have some give um, you can absolutely when you are sewing it down it doesn't have to be this perfectly like stitch for stitch all the way around you can loosely just do a whip stitch like every half inch or so even just to kind of keep it in place if, if that works for you um, but yeah just make sure to give some slack in there and don't tug your sewing thread as you are sewing it down. Um, it's really just to help keep it folded in a nice way so that it doesn't move around while you're wearing it. Um, but you can do it again. You don't have to do it. If you just want to keep it folded, that's totally fine. You can even just put four to, four to like eight little tacking stitches throughout to keep it in place as well instead of whip stitching all the way around. I just like to whip stitch around because I find it just like, okay, done. Um, but yeah, just make sure to do it loosely. Don't tug um, because as you wear it and stuff too, it'll kind of snap into place. Alrighty. Question number two. Do you ever find past projects that you don't wear because you don't like them anymore? What do you do when that happens? I got on a shawl kick a few years ago and one of them just isn't doing it for me now. I can't even remember the last time I wore it because I wanted to and not because I pressured myself into it. Is it worth hanging on to or am I better off giving it to someone who will enjoy it? Um, so yes, I, I'll even find just past projects, you know, a lot of us knit not only for the end product, but because we enjoy knitting. So we're going to continue knitting even when maybe we already have enough hats. <laughs> you know, how many hats do you need every season? 
So I will give things away to loved ones. This summer I had my whole family in town for my big 40th birthday and I let all of them pick a hat out from my collection which kind of cleared out my hat collection. I'm like, okay, I can knit some hats now. Um, so absolutely, if there's something in your handmade collection, whether it be sewing or knitting or what have you, those are such precious items that you still put your heart into. So if you're not getting joy out of them and you know somebody who will, I would say, pass it on. Let that person enjoy that special thing you made. I've definitely given um pieces my mom's probably the biggest recipient of some of my knits she gets a lot of my sweaters i'll pass on shawls to my sisters because we can only wear so many right so i would absolutely go ahead and give them to somebody who will enjoy them we also have i live in a cold place for a decent chunk of the year so there's also places where you can donate things a lot of people actually do drives for hand knits and stuff like that um so if it's just something you never really wore, you weren't really into it, you had fun knitting it, but now you're done with it. Like the end, we can get fulfillment from just the process of making the thing. We don't then have to wear the thing. We can absolutely give it to somebody who wants to. So um, yeah, I say if it's not bringing you joy, gift it to someone you love and let it bring them joy. Question number three. I have got a cluttered desk right now. I'm not going to lie on my scale right here. I was writing a pattern this morning and I feel like I'm knocking in to everything. I'm like, okay, after this, I need to do a desk tidy. All right. Question number three. I have been so interested in spinning and love to hear your advice. I have a question. Can an e-spinner be used as your only spinner? I have heard of people plying with the spinner, but not sure about make, about using it for everything. I ask this because I have a motor scale coordination issue that makes it impossible to use a regular spinning wheel or drop spindle. I've tried, but just doesn't work. I would love to be able to spin and wondered if I could use an e-spinner. 100%. You pretty much any spinning tool, spindle, wheel, e-spinner, can be a standalone spinning tool. I do love to ply on my e-spinner, but that's just because it fits giant bobbins. <laughs> so sometimes when I'm doing like a combo spin that used three different braids, I can a lot of times ply that entire spin onto my big old bobbins on my e-spinner. Um, so I just happen to really like playing on my e-spinner, but I have 100% spun my entire project start to finish single supplied yarn on just my e-spinner. Um, I know a lot of people who only have an e-spinner. So absolutely, it does, it does everything you would need it to do. Um, so I think that is a great option. My... My husband's sending me a text about which salad greens to get. Um, sorry, I don't. I don't want the fifty-fifty blood because I don't want the spinach in it. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop. How about some sweet lettuces, everyone? Do you like a sweet lettuce? Okay. I'm gonna let them know I'm filming. So, let me know, what are your favorite salad greens? <laughs> okay. I Question number four, I have a question about sticking. I'm working on a sweater design that I would love to turn into a cardigan as well. My design will be using a fingering weight yarn paired with mohair. And that had me wondering, can you even steek this kind of sweater? I'm not sure if I will go ahead with this kind of process since it is new to me and might not fit the style and design elements I'm considering, but I'm also curious if you can steek any style of knitting. So if, here's the way I think about steeking. As long as you are still creating a stockinette fabric, and it doesn't just have to be stockinette, but this is a, just an easy way to think about it. If you are still creating a stockinette fabric, you can steek it. Where you're gonna run into trouble 
is when you are slipping stitches and leaving them unworked. I have tried sticky mosaic and I did not have good luck with that. It did not hold together in a way that I felt comfortable putting into a pattern. So if it's mosaic knitting, I would not recommend sticking that. I personally would not stick brioche <laughs> um, or fisherman's rib. That's not to say some people wouldn't, I just wouldn't. Um, but if it is basically a stockinette fabric, even if it has color work, so stranded color work, you're still knitting all the stitches. So that still creates a stockinette fabric. It's just using more than one color, right? Um, so that's kind of how I think about it. If you're still knitting all of the stitches in your fabric, every single row, you're not leaving any of them unworked, then you could probably successfully stick that. As far as if you're more alluding to that yarn pairing of like a fingering weight with a mohair, absolutely, I don't see any reason why that would cause an issue. Um, you just wanna make sure to reinforce it and cut away. I'd say go for it um, and good luck. <laughs> All right, last question. This is going to be such a short episode this week. I am blowing through these. Okay. Okay. Um, you've inspired me to try two color brioche for the first time. I want to knit your Harlow hat, but the yarn that I have my heart set on using is DK weight. And it seems like your pattern calls for either fingering or worsted weight. Is there any way I can modify the pattern to meet gauge with my beautiful DK yarn? Thank you for your help. So I did a one color Harlow knit out of my hand spun and that hand spun did come in closer to a DK weight yarn and I kind of blended the two patterns. Obviously I'm coming from a place of feeling pretty comfortable doing that because I wrote the two patterns. Um, so you could do a mashup if you're comfortable with math of kind of like mixing those two patterns. But what I would do, especially because you're gonna be new to two color brioche, is I would go ahead and do a gauge swatch for DK weight, I would recommend knitting that on a six, I think. I think a six would be nice. And a US size six. What is that? In? I don't know. My little handy dandy. Go. Someday I'll have these. I think it's a four millimeter. Am I right? Am I right? I'm right. Okay. So US six or four millimeter needle. And I would go ahead and consider knitting a swatch, seeing if you like that fabric and looking at your gauge. Is your gauge closer to the worst weight or the fingering weight gauge? And you can find those listed right on the pattern page. And that can kind of guide you to which hat to go towards. Um, you might be able to, some DK weights are so plumpy that they can push that worsted weight line while some worsted weights can kind of push the DK line. Um, so in my mind, I would gently nudge you more towards the worsted weight hat than the fingering weight. Another thing I would consider, and I would not do this for a sweater. So there's my caveat. But for a hat, I personally think I would feel comfortable with being like, okay, here's my gauge. And I would look at the different circumferences of the hat. Oh, let me think about this for a second. <laughs> I just had it and then it was like, it's gone on a breeze. Okay, so what I would do is I would fi figure out your gauge and I would look at the sizes of the hat and say, okay, which hat size am I hoping to get for my head? And let's say I wanna have, brioche is really, really stretchy. So you can, that's the other nice thing is there's gonna be some wiggle room where brioche can really stretch and fit a lot of different sized heads. Um, so let's say I wanna my finished circumference to be 17 inches. Again, there's a lot of stretch, but this is also just a random number. So I would go ahead and get my stitch gauge do the math to see, okay, well, how many stitches would I need to cast on at my gauge to get to this 17 inches? And then I would see which size is closest to that number of cast on stitches. So for instance, let's just do like a quick little math mock-up here. I'm going to confuse myself if I, if I don't write it down while I do it. Okay, so I am going to go, oops, never before used pen. 
Okay, so let us say, I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna say a 20 inch circumference. That's not how big you're gonna want this hat, but it just feels easy for my math sans, sans calculator math on the fly here. All right, so let's say I wanna have a 20 inch brim on my hat. And my gauge with my DK weight yarn on a US six, four millimeter needle is five stitches per inch. So if I want 20 inches, I'm going to multiply that by my five stitches per inch, which means I'm going to need to cast on around 100 stitches. I would then go to the pattern and see, do any of these sizes have me casting on 100 stitches? And then I would just knit that size. And then the only thing you're going to want to do is, let's say you still want to knit the height. The height's to a measurement. You knit to a certain measurement before you start the crown shaping. So just make sure you're knitting to the height that you want it for your size, which might not correlate exactly to the amount of stitches you're casting on. Does that make sense? So let's say you need to cast on the middle size, but that wouldn't have you knitting long enough for the, the depth you want. Um, so you just want to make sure to knit to the correct depth you want depending on which size you want that. That makes sense. So like, let's say, let's say you end up the 100 stitches is going to equal the youth size, but the youth size would only have you knitting to like six inches before starting that crown shaping, but you're an adult. So you want to knit it to seven or eight inches and then start your crown shaping. That's all I mean by that. So did you get that? I don't know why I'm whistling a lot today, um, but I hope that helps kind of lead you on your way. You can, because it's a hat, you're only fudging the circumference there, right? So as long as you're still casting on one of the numbers of stitches that are provided in the pattern, then that's not going to mess up. Your crown shaping is going to be fine. The thing with those brioche hats and the shaping they have is you can't just cast on extra or fewer stitches or your crown shaping won't work out with how it's written in the pattern. Um, but there's, I think, I don't know, three to five different sizes. And so you can pick the stitch count that's closest. And just remember that brioche has a lot of flexibility. I hope that helps and good luck. All right, so we already talked about what I'm wearing, open sky shawl, stripes pullover. We are almost a full month into the DRK March to May knit along. And we have the DRK spin it to knit it knit along traveler edition going strong, which I have got to say, Oh my gosh, so fun following along with everyone's posts. And also there's three forums because the DRK March to May Knit Along has a sweater forum and a shawl forum, depending on what you're knitting. All the forums are hosted in my Ravelry group, but you can absolutely participate on Instagram too. I've been trying to get in there and repost people's posts to my Instagram stories. So it's a great way to find each other. Another great way is to follow the hashtag. So on Instagram, you can follow hashtags just like you do just like you follow people. And that's a really, really fun way to stay up to date when knit alongs are happening. I also love to do it for like sewing patterns, knitting patterns. You can see how different people have made a pattern, um, which is so great too, because you get to end up seeing it on like so many different body types, so many different color combinations. So hashtags, I have to say, are one of the brilliant things that have come out of social media. Uh, but those are some places where you can join in on the fun. And next week, next week, I will announce the next 100 day challenge. Got to get that organized. Um, okay, I think that's it. This is, a, this is a shorty but goody. So I hope that maybe you're getting some lovely weather this weekend. We are going to go and have a cold snap. <laughs> We've had this like pretty lovely hint of spring weather and now all of a sudden this weekend I think there's like a chance of snow it's gonna be in the 30s so I'm kind of hoping for a little spring swing to come back next week it makes my walks especially while I'm knitting very lovely my hands don't get so cold but I hope that you have a great weekend I hope you get to enjoy making something and let me know what you're making is there anything that's just filling you up with all the joy lately. I would love to hear knitting patterns, sewing patterns, fiber you're spinning, recipes you're making, especially if they're gluten-free. 
um, so share, let me know, let me know what you're doing. Books you're reading, I always need book recommendations. I've already read, I think, 35 books this year. Where am I at? Let me look. How many books have I read? 35. So I always need books, 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 books. All right. Have a good one. I hope to see you back next week. If you enjoy this little podcast, please feel free to hit the like and subscribe. I am trying to get those subscribe numbers up to 100,000. If I can, I'm going to do a giant fun sale. So feel free to help me get there. And if not, just thanks for being here. Bye.